Greetings folks, in this video we're going to be having a look at the eSky Goose. It may look a bit familiar uh, because it is really just an updated version of the eSky Eagles or the eSky IS, also known as the Hobby Zone Aero Scout from about six years ago. Uh, this is one of the best beginners models around with pusher motor, uh, really sturdy landing gear and big bush plane style wheels, steerable nose gear. Uh, other really nice features like a full flying elevator and a nice inverted airfoil on the elevator. Nice big rudder. Uh, all the push rods are internal. Um, basically one of the best beginner models around I think. Uh, this is the updated version and there are a few changes. There's now space for FPV cameras in the nose. A shelf in uh, inside for a flight control board so it's been um, brought up to date with latest trends in RC flying to allow for flight control boards and FPV. This version actually came with a stabiliser which they're calling a flight control board uh, but it uh, the setup is only on PC, a Windows PC and I don't have one and unfortunately it wasn't set up to use my uh, SBUS receivers must be set up to use uh, Spectrum style receivers or something like that. So I would need to get hold of a, a, PC, a Windows PC, uh, run the setup app and uh, set up the uh, stabiliser to suit my gear. But I can't do that so I'm going to be flying at normal uh, manual. It'll be very easy to fly anyway I think. Although the wind has picked up a lot. Should still be able to fly it but it might be a bit bumpy. We also have uh, sort of a accessory mounting racks on the bottom there. Landing gear is a bit more flexy than the eSky Eagles. Uh, we'll see how that goes on the on the bumpy landings. The wing join has been changed. It's not thumb screws putting it in. It's just click in and click out. So that makes it very easy to break down for um, compact travelling. Shape of the rudder has changed a little bit. There's a little sort of lower skeg at the back there. It's a great design and it has some really uh, superior design features on it but uh, unfortunately the control horns uh, they're a bit odd uh, they're, they're, it's a nice idea they're double sort of control horns with a, a little barrel thing and an axle that fits in there to connect the push rod to but um, because those two control horns are, are flexy the the little barrel thing can just if it flexes out the, the little barrel thing just drops out so um, I've had to put a wind of tape around both of those control horns to just snug them into the, the little axle. It's just a, a bit of an odd one that one. Uh, they either need a, a ridge on the outside of the little axle so that it clicks into place or a nylock nut or something like that. But as it is if the control horns flex out the uh, push rod just pops out there. But anyway, easily fixed. Be a perfect one for putting a flight control board in, I'll show you. So there's the little stabiliser in there on the little shelf. And that shelf just slides out, so you could replace that with a, an INAV based flight control board. Space in the nose there for action camera, FPV camera. Uh, and, and we have a sort of a shelf over the servos, which the eSky Eagles didn't have. So you've got much more um, options for putting batteries in there. Runs on a 3S 1300 or more and would run perfectly well on 4S too, I think. But anyway, let's give it a go. Now these big wheels are going to handle this grass beautifully, I think. Oh, there's a lot of wind. That would be 15, 20 knots, I think. So uh, We're going to have fun to stay away from those trees. Steerable nose wheel, as I said. Steers around beautifully on this grass. <laughs> there is a lot of wind, but let's see how we go in wind. I will fly it in less wind so we get a decent idea of what's going on. But uh, let's just go for a fly now. Woo, it's got a bit, a bit higher out of the turbulence. Way. We've got plenty of control. That's just turbulence kicking it around. Whoa. Holy moly, what's burning over there? Woo. Big fire. Well, we've got heaps of control. Maybe if I go up higher, I get above the turbulence of the trees. And we're flying backwards. So there's really too much wind to 
give you much of an idea. Flying very much like I remember the East Sky Eagles used to fly. Jesus, what is flying? What is burning over there? Motor off, just gliding now. Beautiful. I have 100% throws, which is probably way too much, and that all flying elevator is going to be very, very effective. Rudder, heaps of rudder. I've got lots of Expo. I could really dial them down a lot, I think. Uh, only need half of those throws, really, especially for a beginner. But we'll try those things out on a calmer day. Takes off nice and easily. Oh, there's lots of wind. It is way too much wind for flying. Does have a bit of adverse yaw, as these style of planes often do. So you do need to use the rudder or mix in a bit of rudder. So it's all good training for a beginner, I would say. In the lulls, it flies beautifully. Otherwise, it's being kicked around a lot. Yeah, this is this is a great beginner's plane. Can handle all conditions, can handle lots of different battery sizes and uh, we'll put a camera on it when the conditions are a little bit better. <laughs> Floating down, bonk. Oh well, great little plane. Yeah, that's going to be good when the conditions are right. Just looking at the thrust angle and you can see this plane doesn't actually need a lot of thrust angle on the motor. A lot of pushes do because the motor is mounted up above the wing and if it's mounted above the wing the motor has to point down towards the centre of gravity area. Because this is directly in line with the wing the motor can basically point straight ahead. It's a bit counterintuitive with, with uh, pusher planes where the motor is mounted up high. If you find that the, the nose is always being pushed over when you throttle up some people think you need to tilt the motor up a little bit. What you actually need to do is tilt it down further. But that's not a problem with the eSky Goose. Just checking the battery with that little bit of flying. Oh, it's still got 86%. We've hardly used anything at all. So very low current draw. That's great. We don't need big batteries. So this is how it arrives in a nice big sturdy box. That's actually a, quite a good box for building planes too. So I'll hang on to that one. This is the plug and play version with the FC inside. The motor is a 2306, 2250 kV. Comes with a 30 amp ESC, length 930, flying weight 690. I think I got about 730 with a 3S 18650 in it. Good flight time too. Recommended battery is a 3S1300, but could take a variety of different sorts of batteries. It comes all packed in polystyrene. Unfortunately, it's a bit hard to get rid of polystyrene, but it does keep it safe. And we get a Facebook link card and the manual, very good manual, shows you how to assemble everything, uh, how to connect up the flight controller or the gyro. It can handle a few different sorts of receivers like uh, DSM and S bus. Unfortunately, I think it's set up from the factory to handle DSM, so I couldn't I couldn't use it with my S bus receivers out of the box. There's the wing spar, and the wings just click in. We'll have a closer look at them a bit later on. Center of gravity marks are clearly marked on the wing, and there's all these spare parts that you can get as well. So there's the one side of the elevator. Uh, that comes in two sides and they just friction fit onto the spar and the wing. Nice uh, reinforcing and plastic hinges. And these are the retaining clips for the for the wings. Makes it easy to pop them on and off. Uh, control horns on the aileron and push rod. And these control horns, as I was talking about out in the field, uh, there's a bit of a design fault with them, I think. Uh, as you can see, if they flex out the push rod adjuster just pops out there's nothing holding it in those holes 
that's why I put a wrap of tape around it just to keep some inward pressure on those two control horns. There's the nice inverted airfoil on the elevator and the fuselage comes all pre-assembled like that. There's the little accessory rack down below for hanging things off, steerable nose wheel, a little plastic cover in the nose. Uh, you can pull that up, that's actually glued on so it's a bit hard to pull it off but you can put FPV camera in there. Motor, uh, plastic hinges on the substantial rudder, canopy is hinged at the front and magnet held at the back. Very nice, it just tilts up and there you can see the shelf for the gyro sitting in there. I'll be replacing that with an INAV flight control board down in the hole you can see the tail servos and uh, that's going forward to the steerable nose wheel as well for the rudder. And on, on the back of the polystyrene box you've got the landing gear and accessories and spars there. These are all the bits and pieces. This is the little connector so you can connect the gyro to a Windows PC for setup. Thumb screws to hold the main landing gear in and then there's a little polystyrene cover to go over that just to make it look nice and neat. Elevator halves just friction fit onto this square spar that is operated via this little uh, rotating bracket in there and there's the full flying elevator the whole thing pivots uh, for elevator action wing retaining clip there uh, the two sides clip into each other there are all the uh, aileron servo wires going down into the fuselage and the wings just click together nice and securely Side view showing the uh, zero thrust zero down thrust angle on the motor almost directly in line with the wing. And uh, this shows that uh, a 3S 18650 pack fits in there easily. Designed to fly on a 1300 3S, but you could easily have a, a much bigger battery in there. It would handle it, no problems at all. It's still very, very light. It's a nice looking plane, really good beginner's plane uh, with steerable nose wheel, good bush plane size landing gear and some really nice features like the full flying elevator and substantial rudder, nice little plane. So that's the eSky Goose, uh, a nice upgrade to the eSky Eagles and uh, I'll do a bit more flying when the weather's a bit calmer and we'll have some onboard footage as well. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time.